Okay, so what does three years worth of improvement look like, specifically on a launch pad? Uh, well, I don't know yet, but I'm hoping to find out by the end of this video. To some of you that are watching that don't know what a launchpad is, it's a MIDI controller slash instrument used for creating music. However, some of us use it, like me for example, to make covers of songs instead. So I've been making videos for a long, long time on this YouTube channel, and admittedly, some of them are absolutely shit. So what I'm setting out to do in this video is, one, remake one of my old projects I created three years ago, specifically this video here, which I'll get into the reasoning for later. Two, update it with all the things I've learned over the years. And three, compare the two and upload this video a week after the very video you're watching launches. My God, I said video so many times then. Now, why do I choose this video in particular? Three years ago, I tried to recreate a video from this guy here, Technics. He was a pretty big deal back in the day. He doesn't upload as much anymore, but he made some amazing videos back then, so I basically wanted to make my own version of his. My idea back then was to make a version of his project that didn't use Max for Live. So if you're not a virgin, uh, to explain Max for Live, it's a tool that Launchpad has used to make lights more efficiently, but the catch is you have to buy a copy of Ableton Suite, which is the big boy copy of the software that we use to make these videos. This is the best way of making projects, but back then I thought, what if I made the same project but with the basic tools that you don't have to quote buy the expensive version of Ableton for? And that's exactly what I did, but it turned out to look a bit like this and as you can see here it looks like shit spoilers i'm going to use the same tools i used to make this video three years ago to make my new version that looks like this instead a launch pad has eight pages each page holds its own lights and sounds for this project there are four pages in particular I'm going to use two of these pages, being one and three, to recreate the Technics project as I intended in the past. The other two, pages two and four, I'm going to chuck the original idea out the window and do my own thing entirely. This way, improvement can be seen side by side more easily in certain areas, if that makes sense. But enough rambling, let's start. After importing the song, I use some movie magic to take the drums out. This is super important because I can play the drums on the cover separately like this. Next, I cut the song up into tiny pieces and map out where they're going to go on the launch pad, which button order, etc. Remember, some of these are going to be similar to Technics' project, like I intended in the first video. Some of them are going to be completely different. But now I'm going to get on to the most important bit, I would say, which is the lights. I'm going to avoid all the confusing bits and just explain the biggest way my light process has changed as well. I used to only think I could use one effect on my lights, meaning I could only make straight lines and very basic patterns. Uh, and you can see that in the old video here three years ago, and that's why the lights look so bad. But after making this video, a guy hit me up called Nurk, who I've mentioned many times in the past, and he taught me another trick. In this trick, if I place what's called a MIDI effect rack with an arpeggiator next to it, I can fiddle with these settings and make what I like to think of as animation keyframes. It's the easiest way to explain it. And this allows me to go frame by frame with my lights and change the direction, size, color, and speed. And this has made an insane difference since learning this trick. But now I've done that, so they're both the same speed. So that's the main thing that I want to show you guys. So uh, I hope this is useful. Rather than bore everyone to death, I'm just going to show you examples of the old project compared to the new version, and you can see how this trick has affected my light process. Side note, let me say that all my videos get absolutely copyright bombed with all the music. I have a total of 40 YouTube dollars to my name and I can't withdraw it. But that doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to ask you guys if you could please do a subscribe and a like on the bell, bro army. Uh, especially if you like this kind of different video idea because uh, I might make it in the future, but I probably won't. Okay, so getting into the recording, uh, I'm going to be honest, it's a massive pain in the ass. Uh, my room is not set up for recording launchpad videos in the slightest. Uh, just for example, it usually looks like this. My bed turns into this, and I'll just show you my setup because I've actually made myself a reminder video of where to put everything because it is such a pain in the ass. But yeah, watch this. Here is the future jars. Background, pad, camera, nice and straight. Legs like that. 14 kg, make sure I don't touch the, touch the desk. First light all the way up, pointing straight towards the pad. Second light, 
medium size just above the door knob pointing at the wall about a 45 degree angle so it bounces off back on there yeah boy now recording the video takes a while uh usually uh i'd say about 20 minutes to an hour again depending on the difficulty of the song so i'll set my room back up i'll sit down load up premiere pro and make a glass of water The next part is editing. Uh, this is one of my favourite parts of making videos in the first place. This is the reason why I started to be honest. I feel like this has changed a lot since three years ago. For some reason, I used to use this black fucking doo-doo effect around my videos and it looks absolutely awful. Uh, but for, <laughs> I don't know why, but I changed it and uh, now it's like a, a, a vignette which I use and I think that looks way better than whatever the fuck that was. I basically figured out how to make the vignettes differently which is why they look so much better and I'm just going to show the process of me doing that now. Uh, I use what's called a transparent layer and I put that above the clip and add a what's called a circle effect which is surprisingly a circle as you can see. Uh, you can basically invert this circle, change the colour to black and feather it out. When you feather it out it basically softens the edges so it adds a vignette effect instead and it looks a lot better to whatever that was in the past. Uh, another thing I've learned over time are slight edit transitions to punchy parts of the song. Um, now I've purposely put a editing transition in this video to show uh, my improvements overall in my editing. The process isn't much different to how I used to do it. I've just got through the learning curve of how to move the camera around and smoothen the effect. Uh, basically it's one of those things that the more I do it the better I get. Uh, I use Adobe Premiere Pro as you can see and it's all to do with these keyframes. These are points where the video moves from A to B. In my case I made little movements changing the size and adding a blur to make a shaky effect. Now that the video is done, I'll export it into a folder with the new upload information inside. I'll also make a text file of the description and the tags to the song. And of course, the most important part of the video, which is the thumbnail. Uh, usually for the thumbnail, I'll go back to the original video and I'll find a good screenshot of where the lights are popping out the most. I'll take the screenshot into Photoshop and add in the name of the song and the artist themselves and basically use a big bright font uh, to make sure that it pops out so everyone can see it. I'm no YouTube wizard, uh, from my experience all I know is the most colourful frame I can find uh, mixed with uh, the big bold text so everyone can see instantly what the song is. Uh, it really works for very popular songs so that's why I use this font here which is called the bold font. So when I'm done I'll export it into a PNG into the same folder which means I now have the video, the text file with the description and tags and I have the thumbnail. Now that pretty much wraps up the process of how I make these videos and this video is going to be uploaded exactly a week after the one you're watching. But before I go, I'm going to show a couple comparisons again from the old video back to the new one and hopefully answer what three years of improvement looks like. Uh, this bit is completely unscripted, but I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Um, I've never done anything like this before with my voice. Um, so I wanted to try something different and I really have put a lot of effort into making the project, uh, uploading the project file which will happen in the future and just making a full package, uh, a two-parter. Um, I've never done anything like this before so I'm hoping it is received um, well as I've put so much effort into this. Um, again, turning YouTube mode back on, if you could do a like on the bell. Uh, that would be that be that be pretty cool, um, and hopefully I'll do something like this again. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. See ya.